For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba, Research and Analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me today to talk about his column titled, We Cannot Emerge from the SA Political Crisis If We Mischaracterize It. Hi, Raymond. Hi. What exactly is wrong with this article? You more or less let Carol Payton off the hook and criticize her sources. Well, you know, all the sources, uh, I can't understand what they're saying because they have a number of statements that are not backed up with evidence. They refer to the 1994 consensus that has run its course. They never explain what it means. There's references to a national convention. It's not explained why we should go for that. So what I felt was wrong is that Carol Payton gave a description of the unhappiness that people have with the current situation. And then she quotes the string of people who are intellectuals who are supposed to come from the 1980s and the early 1990s. Now, I also come from that period, but I don't recognize what they're saying. So that, to me, it's unconvincing. And uh, although Carol Payton is a very seasoned author, she's using people a uh, whole string of quotations. It would have been better, I think, if she'd given her own analysis and her own answers instead of having these this long string of unexplained quotations, which to me are unconvincing. And what is wrong with Ntebisi Jonas' suggestion for a national convention? Could it not be helpful to bring large numbers of people together to trash out how we move forward what you and everyone else concede is a crisis. Well, you know, a national convention is usually held when you first establish a new states, like 1910 Act of Union. Then there was a national there was a national convention. People called for a national convention in the 1950s under apartheid because they wanted a new South Africa. Now the the Constitutional Assembly that was established after 1994 was a version of a national convention because that was a new beginning. It was establishing a new state, a democratic state. Now, we've got a democratic state. We've got one of the most democratic constitutions in the world. There are problems with implementation and corruption and violence, but you don't need a national convention to remedy that because those are things that require uh, the police to do their job, the courts to do their job, which they do, and politicians to stop stealing from the poor and operate in an honest way. So what I see in the article does not explain why there should be a national convention. And in the articles that Jonas has written, which are more substantial than the article represents, he doesn't really provide a rationale for national convention. So I find it completely unconvincing, like the 1994 consensus having run its course. I don't understand what that means. Uh, that's 1994 consensus I understood to be the democratic order we've got. And it's definitely not out run its course. You suggest that holding representatives accountable is insufficient. So is it realistic to think that large numbers will come into the streets to bring about change? You know, people at the moment are romanticizing constituency systems, that there was a cartoon by Carlos, who is a very politicized journalist, and he has one side where an MP supposedly is a is reporting to this group of people who are his constituency, and it's very communicative and so on. On the other side, there's uh, the people who don't give a damn like we have here. Now, the thing is, in the UK, when these people are in Parliament um, and their constituency is Lancaster or Leicester or one of these places, they don't get on the phone every second day and say to them, tell me, this is what we're going to discuss. What do you think? 
they discuss and they argue in the caucus of their party in Westminster, the same way as happens here with the PR system. So personally, I do agree with a mix of proportional representation and constituency systems, but I don't think that's the only thing that is needed. People are not there to vote every five years only and to get these report backs, which as I say, we mustn't expect this romanticized version. It just doesn't happen. What I'm saying in addition, if you're referring to the 1980s, that was a period where people took control of their own lives. If there was a system where electricity was going to be delivered or telephone lines or housing in a particular village, the people would get involved. They would say, no, 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 it's not going to be okay if you put it here uh, because uh, there are problems in the uh, connectivity in that area we know from having had this, that, and the other experience. So what I'm saying is um, not that people must come into the streets, which is one of the ways, not only that, but they need to be, geared, be involved. This notion of service delivery suggests passivity, that you wait for the state to deliver. Now, what they deliver is not just a case of numbers, how much water, how many houses, all of that. Are they fit for purpose? And the people who live in the villages and the towns and the cities, they know better than the engineers or the builders who come there, what is needed in those places. They need to be involved in it. That's what I'm speaking about. So that to fetishize constituency systems is to look at only one element of the problem of electoral representation and reform. And I do agree with a combination like we do have in local government, something of that order, but it's not sufficient. People must get involved in a number of other ways. Thank you, Raymond. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Kuma Media's polity about we cannot emerge from the SA political crisis if we mischaracterize it.